Hey, LeBron, in, in all your years, I don't know if there's been a time where you've seen the same opponent in the regular season, back-to-back -back games, and I just wondered what you took out of that uh, from this experience because it's going to keep happening this year a couple times. Yeah, it's definitely um, a different feeling. You know, usually when you have those uh, – home and home games, you could play a team at your home stadium and then go to theirs the following night, either on a back-to-back -back or like every other day, like today. So uh, this is different. Obviously, you're in, you're in town for, uh, you know, a few more days and you're preparing for the same team. So a lot different, but in the sense of it feels like kind of the playoffs. Um, obviously, the the intensity and, and, and the way you prepare is a little bit different, but as far as being in the same city for four or five days, uh, that it has that playoff feel, you know, like if you was playing a game one and game two or or a game three and game four at someone else's building. And then just what's most important when you get down to that, you know, tie game, half court, possession for possession, you've been in the situation a billion times. So what's the what's the most important thing in that situation? Uh, get a good shot. Uh, get a great shot, actually. Um, you know, put yourself in a position where you've been successful in your career or been successful with that team. And. Uh, one thing that we know for sure is we have a great uh, one-two punch with myself and AD who close out games. And, uh, and we also have so many complimentary guys that can make big shots too. So um, just try to get in position, um, give ourselves enough time on the shot clock where we're not going against the clock and shooting bad shots late in the clock and uh, go from there. <clears throat> Dave. Coach, you know, the other night when you were talking about uh, reflecting on the people that are close to you as you turn 36, you said you like being around energy givers, not energy seekers. Uh, and that's kind of how you approach uh, your life as well. Do you think that dynamic, that uh, characteristic helps in this season in particular, and maybe with your roster makeup, guys having that approach um, because there aren't the things like drawing the energy from that deep down? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we hope we could take, uh, you know, that energy. Um, and then when, when guys are, low energy or guys are, are feeling a little bit, you know, down, then we um, can have the opportunity to big our, uh, you know, bring each other up, you know. So, you know, there's going to be a long season. It's going to be a difficult season. You're going to have to have games where you have to give energy to one another, you know, manifest energy for yourself, um, like you said, without the fans and things of that nature. That um, So, um, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I absolutely agree with you on that. Kyle? Um, just in terms of getting the urgency and energy out early in the season, where are you guys in terms of just starting a game with the energy that you want every night and, and getting to that competitive level? Well, I mean, uh, for us, we want to play the right way, both offensively and defensively. And uh, we're getting better and better every game. Um, you know, we do a great job of watching film and being able to take our film sessions and approach it to the game situation. Um, so that's what we want to do. You know, we come out and we want to, you know, have a defensive mindset to make teams score over us, not put them to the free throw line, try to turn them over, but be solid. And then offensively, move the ball, share the ball, play with pace, and get great shots. And if we can do that, we're going to be in a lot of games this year. Yovan. Hey, LeBron. Um, Talon played a, a season high next tonight with, with KCP and, and Alex out. Um, I'm curious what you thought of his performance tonight and then just kind of overall to start the season with how well he played in the preseason. Well, I think every game for him is, is, a, is another example of, of a teaching moment for him. Um, I always live by the phrase, the best teacher in life is experience. And uh, he's experiencing uh, some great uh, moments for himself as a pro. Um, you know, obviously the preseason, um, he played extremely well. Um, and then you take another step in the regular season is different from the preseason. So. Um, he's going to continue to learn. He's going to continue to get the opportunities because he's earned it. And when he gets out there, he, um, he just has to play his game um, and make plays for not only himself, but make plays for others as well. Um, he has that he has that talent. So, um, But we don't mind. I mean, the kid is 20 years old. He's going to make mistakes, and we're okay with him, and we're going to live with that. Um, it's what person at 20 does not make mistakes? So, um, But for him, he, he, he wants to learn. He wants to be uh, better than he is uh, today, tomorrow. And... Uh, you know, and that's a, that's a great thing to have. Last two <clears throat> questions. Uh, Dan? Go, no, Brian. Um, KCP, really since the bubble, has been so valuable to you guys in terms of not just the shooting, but it's his movement and, and uh, transition, kind of the way he fills lanes and stuff like that. Um, how much – is that confidence that, that that's kind of helped him elevate, kind of just knowing his, his role within this team? What, what do you think that's been? And then, obviously – 
what was it like to see him go down and you know it seems like it wasn't too bad but it looked a little scary yeah i mean uh his confidence is at, a, is at a um is at an all-time high he knows what his value is to this team and he knows what he's about um and what he brings to our team is perfect in his role um a guy who's a catch and shoot three-point player a guy who's a great cutter uh great in transition and also could just get, you know, um, just a lot of movement, um, you know, getting defenses shifted because of his speed. Um, and so it's um, it works for our team perfectly. So, you know, when you have that confidence in yourself and it trickles down to the team, uh, we know how big of an asset he is. And uh, obviously, you know, hated to see him go down tonight and was just hoping for the best, which it uh, which it is. Um, it is the best case scenario with the turn ankle and uh, we should have him back in, um, in no time. Last question, Alfredo. Well, well, there it is. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do one more, Kari. Uh, I'm I'm back. I don't know if you can hear me. All right, Alfredo. Let's Al, go. Alfredo, All right. come on now. <laughs> uh, Le LeBron, in regards to um. And getting Mike so more involved, I, I know he seemed kind of frustrated, especially in the third quarter. Um, what, what, are, what are some of the things that um, you guys could work on to get him more involved and, you know, get him on the group? Um, I just think, you know, playing through him a lot more. Um, you know, when we do that, we're very good because his ability to see the floor, pass the ball, um, he does some special things out on the floor. So, you know, when he's out on the floor, we have to do a better job of, not playing much pick and roll with him setting the picks, but more just letting him, you know, kind of play that point forward or that point center position at the top of the key, letting the offense flow through him because uh, he makes uh, just great decisions. So, um, you know, we're going to we're going to get him more involved, um, you know, because he's going to be a big part of what we do. We know that um, he showed that already this year um, against Minnesota. So we want to continue to just, uh, you know, get him and, and Dennis and Trez and Wes acclimated to what we want to do. And, uh, and go from there.